one problem that a lot of countries have been facing in recent years is the effect of the financial crisis and the austerity programs that have uh, either put people into poverty who were not in poverty before or made it difficult to come out of poverty. Um, I think we, we have to address the failures of the market system when it's not a regulated market system. Um, and I think we need to do that uh, much more seriously. Um, but uh, we have a focus for the world leading up to the end of 2015, which we shouldn't underestimate in its potential to move us forward. Um, with the Sustainable Development Goals for all countries, rich and poor, and an agenda that uh, will give us a safe world by having um, a, a fair and just climate agreement. Uh, so uh, if I think back uh, 20 years ago, um, we needed the uh, landmark events, uh, the Millennium Declaration at the beginning of this century, uh, we now have a year, 2015, where if we can work together and combine the social movements, the trade union movement, the human rights movement, the business community that is farsighted in really talking about sustainable development um, and uh, try to uh, influence uh, governments globally on their responsibility during this, year, uh, this period up to the end of 2015. I think that will make a difference, and it will make a huge difference for economic, social, and cultural rights. Social movements can play a very important role in linking human rights and the global economy and addressing the issues that need to be addressed. Uh, we've learned from the uh, use of social media during the Arab Spring, the way it can mobilize people very quickly and mobilize them around ideas. But it's happening in the informal sector. Uh, you have Slum Dwellers International linking across countries. You have waste pickers, the poorest of the poor, who pick the waste off dumps, are now an NGO. I get their emails. They're uh, you know, communicating. They're fighting court cases and winning them. And they're, they're marshalling their, their energies. And the human rights movement in the past hasn't been good enough at linking with social movements. I really want to see that happening. And also linking with the trade union movement on the right to work, which is a right under Article 23 of the Universal Declaration, the right to form trade unions, uh, equal pay, which we still haven't achieved in any country, full equal pay. Um, so uh, I think that possibility of mobilizing uh, in a, uh, a way that um, puts people at the center and their concerns in wanting uh, in the 21st century that in fact there is the full realization of, of human rights. 20 years after Vienna, this should be a lived reality, and it is not for, the, for a very significant uh, part of the uh, population of the world. Uh, I'm a grandmother. I will have, my four grandchildren will be in their 40s in 2050. I think a lot about that world of nine billion people, and they will have more weather shocks even if we do all the right things now. But if we don't, take our responsibility now, they will have very severe weather shocks, very severe problems of food production, very severe problems of displacement of people. It's estimated we could have as many as 200 million climate displaced people by 2050. Uh, there is at the moment no legal regime for them. So we need to understand that we face big challenges uh, and that we, we need to do it in a human-centered, human rights way that uh, recognizes as the Universal Declaration did in Article 1. All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. And it's that human dignity that is at the heart of understanding the importance of economic, social, and cultural rights. And we have to uh, live together in a much more uh, populated world with stresses on the resources of that world, with a worry about what we are doing to the ecosystem of the world itself. These are real threats. And that's why 2015 is such an important year and why we have to work together to ensure that we address these issues.